Well, I was born completely colorblind, so I, I have never seen color. And when I was a child, I had this uh, interest in perceiving color because color is an extremely social element, not because of the beauty of color, but because of this social component of color. I felt that I wanted to perceive color because there's many things like yellow pages, Bluetooth, blue tag, things that appear every day, uh, like uh, Pink Panther, the green card, elements that are daily and that I was constantly, every day of my life, reminded that color existed and that I couldn't perceive it. There's uh, even James Brown, he has it as a surname. So I, I was renowned every day, also a big country called Greenland. So there's uh, <laughs> color everywhere in every single subject. It's not just art. Uh, also, there's a, when you use color as a code for knowing which is the hot water, which is the cold water, this was also confusing. Uh, also, when you use color as a code in maps, this is fine, but if I go to Tokyo, I can get easily confused because it's huge. And also, uh, there's this strange situation where three <laughs> different countries share exactly the same flag. So the basic reason why I wanted to perceive color was because of this element of information. And then also when you use it as a description. Have you seen a man with ginger hair, blue eyes, and dressed in pink? I would have absolutely no idea because the only information I get is that the man has hair, that he has eyes, and that he's not naked. So <laughs> that's why I wanted to perceive color. And then I studied music and I, because it was a black and white instrument. I thought piano would have no, no color. But then I realized that there were many uh, theories since Newton and before Newton and after Newton that related color and music. So uh, I thought maybe there was a way of, of sensing color through sound. And then we started a project uh, 11 years ago with Adam Montandon in England at uh, Dartington College with the aim of extending my senses by using cybernetics. The aim was to create an electronic eye or something that would allow me to hear color instead of seeing it. So we created this uh, first prototype and it was based with a camera, uh, uh, a computer, five kilo computer that I wore in a, in a, in a backpack and then a pair of headphones that would allow me to hear color. So the software was picking up the light frequency in front of me, uh, the software was transforming it into sound, and I was hearing the color in front of me. So I slowly learned the, the main sounds of color, and then when I got used to the main six colors, I added, well, we added 12 more, and then we added 24 more, and then until in 2007, I was able to perceive 360 different notes for 360 microtones. So each uh, microtone has this specific uh, sound, so this is different colors from red to orange now and it keeps going up and up. So if we could hear the frequency of color, of light, we would hear these frequencies. So it's all within one octave. Now, there was a point when I was able to perceive uh, all these hues, but there was saturation that I couldn't perceive. So we, we added different volume levels to perceive different saturation levels. So uh, these are the different headsets that I designed since 2004. I wanted to hear people as well, so I cut the headphones in half so that I could hear other people talk as well. And then uh, one of the other things was to use an antenna so that I could reach uh, colors easily. Also, the biggest change was then in 2010 to stop using uh, the ears to hear color, and I started to use bone conduction because bone conducts sound, so I started to use bone with pressure. Then I stopped using a computer as well, and I started using a chip installed at the back of my head. So uh, I slowly uh, created different uh, antennas up until now that it's uh, connected to the occipital bone, and I hear colors directly inside the bone. So there's no pressure anymore, and I, I, I feel that this is a way of perceiving uh, visual sounds, bone conduction, and the other audio sounds come through air conduction. Now the next step is we'll present very soon the new antenna. In a few weeks, we'll present a new uh, type of antenna that al will allow me to connect to other people's vision as well, not only the colors that I have in front of me, but the colors that other people are perceiving. Uh, this is my brain, and this is uh, my brain has changed since I've uh, been connected to a software for 10 years. And uh, I no longer feel that the software is something external. I feel that the software is a part of my brain. I feel no difference between what the software is, is telling me and what my brain is creating. This happens especially when I sleep. When I sleep, my brain creates electronic sounds, not the software, but it feels like the same feeling. It feels the same. So I feel a strong connection with the software. And I, this started to happen slowly. And I started to feel that there was no difference between the cybernetics and my organism. And, and that's when I started to feel 
that I was a cyborg. I started to feel that I was no longer using technology, that I not, was no longer wearing technology, but that I was technology. And this is a specific feeling that uh, I still feel that uh, this is a part of my body and the software part of my senses. Now, I had a problem with the UK government 10 years ago because I, I have a British passport, but I wasn't allowed to renew it because uh, I sent a picture of my uh, photo with the electronic eye and said that this is not allowed to have electronic equipment. So I said to them that what they were seeing was a part of my body, an extension of my senses, and that they should allow it to be, appear on the passport. And they said, no. So I said, just remove the electronic eye and send us a photo without electronic equipment. So I kept insisting that uh, they should allow it as a part of the body because I felt that this was me. And then uh, in the end, after a long period of letters, they allowed me to appear with the first <laughs> electronic eye. So I need to renew it soon. I uh, hope I don't have any problems. I need to renew before May, so uh, hopefully they will allow me. And now there was a point when I was able to perceive colors just like you, or like human vision, but then I didn't see why I should stop there. There's many, many more colors that humans cannot perceive, like infrared and ultraviolet. So I decided to continue extending my color perception, and I added infrared and ultraviolet to the electronic eyes. So now I can actually perceive more colors than I would have ever perceived through my normal vision eyes. Uh, for example, now I can tell if there's a, a movement detectors in a room, if I hear infrared, or I can know if it's a good day or a bad day to sunbathe, because if I hear ultraviolet, then I know it's not very good to sunbathe. So actually, the good thing about having an antenna is that I can actually keep extending my perception of reality the, the longer I live. So it, I, I, it's a good thing to get old, because uh, I know that my senses will, will get better instead of degenerating as it should be or it would normally be. Now my life has changed in many ways. I used to dress in a way that it looked good, but now I dress in ways that it sounds good because each piece of clothes is a specific note. So I, I dress in chords or in specific uh, songs as well. So we design different <coughs> outfits that sound like a specific song. This, for example, first one is C major, the second is D minor. That, that would be suitable for a funeral, for example, because it's a minor chord. And this is a song, for example. And this is a tie that sounds with a specific song. Now, food has also changed because uh, you can eat a song by composing music with a salad, for example. There's many notes, so you can eat your favorite song and compose music with uh, elements. Also, museums have changed because now I can listen to a Picasso, I can listen to an Andy Warhol, so painters have become composers, and it's a completely new experience. Also, supermarkets is like going to a nightclub because there's many, many <laughs> songs in there, especially some zones. And, now, the way I perceive beauty or faces and, uh, uh, has changed as well, because now each person has a specific sound. So instead of drawing someone's face, what I do is I get close to someone's face, and then I write down the different notes, the, the, the eyes, the lips, the skin, and the hair, and this creates a sound portrait. So each face sounds different, and this is what uh, I like doing. Just here. One, one of the first sound portraits was uh, Prince Charles. I think he was quite worried here. <laughs> Uh, Judy Dench doesn't sound much because her hair is almost silent because uh, white and black is silent. Uh, now, people that say that they are black, they're not actually black. They're very, very dark orange. And people that say that they're white, they're not white. They're very, very light orange. And this was something that really surprised me, that humans are not black and white. They're all of different shades of orange, not uh, black and white. <laughs> Al Gore has two different colored eyes, two different turquoises. And... Uh, no sound in the hair here. <laughs> so this is an example of a face portrait. So you add different layers of sound, and then you have a specific chord. Even twins sound different, because there's so many slight differences in, in color. Well, I'll go on. And uh, this is the human color wheel, different shades of orange. Now. Also, cities are not gray. Each city has a specific color. There's uh, people that show that the floor is gray, but if you look closely, you'll see that the floor is not gray. It always has some kind of color. Uh, now, there's a secondary effect of hearing colors that normal sounds also become color. When I listen to the radio, I can feel color by listening to the different notes. So to me, 
the, to most people, there's a, a, an age of black and white television and color television. To me, there's the black and white radio before. Now it's a color radio, because I feel color when I listen to the radio. This is Mozart's Queen of the Night, the first 300 notes transposed into color. And this is Baby Baby by like Justin Bieber transposed into color. <laughs> Now, these are two speeches, also the voice of people. Each frequency is a specific color. So when you transpose voice into color, you can also visualize the specific colors of speeches. Now, the one on the left is Martin Luther King's speech, I Have a Dream. And the one on the left is a speech by Hitler. Hitler has many colors because he changed frequency in a very small amount of time. Now, four years ago, Moon Rivas and I decided to create the Cyborg Foundation, which is an organization that aims to help humans extend their senses by applying technology to the body. Also, we want to promote cyborgism as an art movement and a social movement, and we want to defend cyborg rights. Now, um, these are some of the projects we've done. This is a small earrings that vibrate whenever there's a presence. So if, if you close your eyes, you can feel if there's someone walking from left to right by the vibration. Also, if you turn around the, the sensors, then Moon Rivas, she, she also appears in the past where she was able to travel with these uh, sensors. If you turn them around, then you can feel if someone gets close to you at the back. So it's a very, very simple, very simple sense that you can apply and you can actually feel more than you would with your normal senses. The ear bork is the same as the eye bork, but the other way around. It transposes sound into color so you can visualize it uh, real time. Also I have a dream. So it transposes the main frequency into the frequency of color. And then there's also created electronic eyes for blind people so that it can sense other things, not only colors, but also obstacles or words. So instead of translating a book into Braille, you could use an electronic eye or an antenna that would transpose the, the words into spoken words so you wouldn't have to translate it into, into Braille or into your own language. We've also developed the iBork app for Android that allows you to hear colors with a an app, and also a fingerboard, which is still in development. It's a small camera in a finger. There's a boy that came to the Cyborg Foundation with a finger missing. and He said he wanted to extend his senses. He didn't want a normal finger. He wanted to have something more useful. So we said, what do you want? He didn't really know. We asked if he was a smoker, but he because he could have had a lighter, but he's not a smoker. <laughs> also, if he wanted like a, something to know the exact weight of objects so that he could, if he hold an object, he would know the exact weight. But this was not interested. He was interested in having something that would be related to his career, which is multimedia and image. So he has a camera, and now he wants to feel things that he wouldn't feel with his finger through the camera. So it's still in development. Also, the internal compass, a small uh, element that vibrates whenever you face north. So if you ever confuse, you can turn around, and then it vibrates when you face north. Also, the internal light this is something uh, that I, I want to have that we are developing with a dentist, because I have a teeth missing here, or well, a tooth, and I want to have some light instead of a normal light. So in case of total darkness or emergency, I can just click, and then I can have light with my mouth. So this is not cybernetic, and it's not electronic, but it's just something that very simply we can add to our our bodies and have things that we wouldn't have. And the last sense that we've been developing is the seismic sense that Moon Ribas has been wearing since February last year. And it vibrates whenever there's an earthquake in the world. So now, if there's an earthquake in China, her arm will vibrate. Depending on the Richter scale, the vibration will be higher or lower. So she's been feeling earthquakes since February, and she now feels uh, as something normal to feel the vibrations of the world. Now, most of these senses are senses that already exist, and we feel that uh, applying these senses to humans is very, very natural. We actually feel it's very animal, because in my case, having an antenna makes me feel closer to insects that have antennas. Also, perceiving infrared and ultraviolet makes me feel closer to insects and animals that can perceive these, these colors. Also, hearing through bone conduction makes me feel closer to dolphins, because dolphins can also hear through bone conduction. So now that I have technology in my body, I feel closer to animals, not to robots or to technology, which is something that might happen to many other people. So I just encourage you to experience this uh, union between technology and body, because it's not as bad as the 20th century was predicting. Thank you.